are watching Darasa Online. Hello my dear students, my name is Josia Matalima. I'm a teacher teaching chemistry subject. I'm here with you to discuss some issues or concepts that appear to be difficult to most of you. And for today, we are going to discuss on the topic known as halogens derivatives of hydrocarbons. And uh, under this topic, we will stick on the subtopic known as chemical properties. And uh, by the end of this lesson, you will be able to describe nucleophilic substitution reaction of halogens derivatives of hydrocarbons. And from there now, you will have a competence in using scientific and technological skills in, in, in solving environmental problems that are happening in our normal environment. So let us now go and start discussing our, 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 our issues in this topic. So, by introduction, when we talk of halogens derivatives of hydrocarbons, we talk of the compounds of carbon in which carbon, hydrogen, and halogens are being found. So, it involves carbon, hydrogen, and halogens, and they are being represented by the general formula. whereby R stands for alkyl O allyl hydrocarbons. And the X stands for the halogens. So in our present study, we will only focus on if the ala is stands for alkyl group and if ala stands for alkyl group then the halogens derivatives of hydrocarbon is known as halo alkane As what I introduced that we are going to discuss on critical issues and that critical issues for today is chemical properties of halo alkane. Normally, haloalkane are more reactive than their corresponding alkane due to presence of a halogen that withdraws electrons away from carbon and making it partially post negatively charged, leaving carbon to be partially positively charged. So, from consider the general structure of haloalkane. So due to more electronegativity value of halogens, now the halogens becomes partially negatively charged and the carbon becomes partially positively charged. So that is where now the reaction takes place and that is what makes it to be more reactive than their corresponding alkane. So the typical reactions that takes place in halo alkane are
we have nucleophilic substitution reaction we have elimination reaction we have reaction with the metals and we have the interconvertibility reaction so as what i said for today we are going to consider the nucleophilic substitution reaction the nucleophilic substitution reaction in halo alkane is the reaction between halo alkane we see a nucleophile. So what is happening here, if this one stands for haloalkane, and uh, reacting with a nucleophile, then the halogens will be substituted by the nucleophile. So for halide to be substituted by nucleophile needs the nucleophile to be stronger than the halides. And the typical stronger nucleophile are we have the hydroxide ions, we have water. We have iodide that can be released either by sodium iodide. We have ammonia. We also have <coughs> amine. We have nitrile. We have alkoxide ions and etc. So these are some examples of nucleophiles that can be able to substitute the halogens, the halogens from the haloalkane. And the chemical reactions that undergo through nucleophilic substitution reaction are as follows. Haloalkane undergoes nucleophilic substitution reaction under two main mechanisms. We have one is the unimolecular nucleophilic substitution reaction. Unimolecular nucleophilic substitution reaction is the reaction is also sometimes called as first order nucleophilic substitution reaction and it is denoted by capital letter S sub N then 1. So this stands for first order nucleophilic substitution reaction and this reaction involves the concentration of only one reactant. So the reaction depends on the concentration of one reactant and that reactant is the alkyl halide in ready 
determining step and the first order nucleophilic substitution reaction takes it through two main steps so we have the steps involved first step is the formation of carbocation intermediate The formation of carbocation intermediate is taking an example of as our halo alkane. The first steps involves the formation of intermediate carbonium ion. This carbon now will become positively charged since the bond will break it to that way then you will have the halogens that will be negatively charged. Now this is what we call it carbocation intermediate. So the second step is now the nucleophile attacks the carbocation intermediate. Now here the nucleophile will attack the positive charged carbon and ending up getting the product. And here this reaction is the slowest reaction while this one is the first reaction. So the rate determining step reaction is this one, the first step. So in the first step, we see that only one reactant are being involved. That's why we call it first order nucleophilic substitution reaction. And the, the first order nucleophilic substitution reaction is enhanced with the stability of carbocation intermediate which means that this is due to positive inductive effect so due to positive inductive effect on positively charged carbon on positively charged carbon the tertiary alkyl halides will be first in this kind of reaction than the secondary and the primary alkyl halides due to stability of positively charged carbonium ion, whereby the alkyl group here releases electrons, thereby stabilizing the positively charged carbon. Therefore, the first order nucleophilic substitution reaction is first in tertiary alkyl halide than 
in secondary alkyl halide due to stabilization of intermediate carbonium ion. So this is all about the first order nucleophilic substitution reaction. If we consider the second order nucleophilic substitution reaction, which is also known as bimolecular nucleophilic substitution reaction, by molecular nucleophilic substitution reaction. This reaction is also called as second order nucleophilic substitution reaction. Why is it called second order nucleophilic substitution reaction? Because the rate of reaction depends on two reactants in rate determining step reaction. and is denoted as as what I have said the rate of reaction depends on the concentration of both reactants and that is the alkyl halide and the, the nucleophile. So it depends on the concentration of both reactants that is the alkyl halide and the, the nucleophile. Now consider This example, whereby you have the nucleophile, so due to, to weak steric hindrance, the halogens makes the carbon to be positively polarized, while the halogens becomes negatively polarized. So the nucleophile now will attack this carbon and the resulting into formation of of this intermediate product which is now called the transition state. So during the transition state, the, both the reactants are being involved, which differs from the first order nucleophilic substitution reaction, where only one reactant are being involved. So that's why here we call it second order nucleophilic substitution reaction. And there now the reaction will proceed now to form Now the halogen now will be substituted by the nucleophile and the So during transition state during transition Step. both the reactants are involved 
That's why we call it second order nucleophilic substitution reaction. Now, these are the two mechanism of nucleophilic substitution reaction in haloalkane. And the typical examples of nucleophilic substitution reaction are we have the hydrolysis, we have formation of ester, we have formation of ether, we have formation of iso cyanide, we have formation of alkali cyanide, and we have the formation of nitroalkane. Those are examples of nucleophilic substitution reaction in haloalkane. You are watching Darasa Online. So, from there now, I'm sure you are able to describe the nucleophilic substitution reaction in haloalkane by these two mechanisms. Normally, the order of reactivity in in, in, in the bimolecular nucleophilic substitution reaction, follow the trend. Is the alkyl group is greater than the primary alkyl halides. The primary alkyl halides is also more reactive than the secondary alkyl halides, and the secondary alkyl halides is more reactive than the tertiary alkyl halides. So that is the order of second order series in chemical reaction of electrophilic substitution reaction. So from there now, after a short break, we will now see some examples or some questions which might appear in the exam. And the, once they appear, you can follow this mechanism and get the answer correct. Thank you. Okay, welcome back to our lesson now. As what I've said now, we are now, we are now going to look at some of the sample questions that may appear in your exams, that, which involves the use of this knowledge that we have discussed. Now, the first example, or the first question, is that 2-bromo, two 2-methyl two propane reacts with aqueous alkalis via first order nucleophilic mechanism. Now you are asked to write the chemical equations to show how the reactions occurs according to this mechanism. It is so simple since you have seen how the mechanism is taking place. Then in second, you have been asked to identify the rate determining step and third, why the reaction is referred to as first order nucleophilic substitution reaction. So by answering that question, let us start now writing the formula of 2-bromo-2-methyl-propane. 2-bromo-2-methyl-propane two two methyl propane. Two bromo two methyl propane, our longest chain is propane, so it has three carbon atoms. And to carbon number two, we have bromine, we also have CH3. So this is, here we have hydrogen, 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 and there we have also hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. Or in a simple way, you can write it as CH3, C, then bromine, CH3, CH3. So this is two methyl, two, two bromo, two methyl propane. So we have been told that it reacts with alkalis. Alkalis, it can be either sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide. So let us consider by using potassium hydroxide. So CH3C bromine, CH3 and CH3. And we see that this is tertiary haloalkane. So if it is tertiary haloalkane, that means it undergoes first order nucleophilic substitution reaction, meaning that it involves only one reactant, or the reaction depends on the concentration of only one reactant. So our alkali releases hydroxide ions at the nucleophile, and hydroxide ions is the stronger nucleophile that can substitute the halogens. So our nucleophile is hydroxide. So it will react now whereby the bond will break down there and you have the intermediate carbocation, which is this one. This is now the first step. The second step now, the nucleophile, this one will attack now the positively charged carbon. So 
So this will attack the positive charged carbon, then ending up getting the product that will be the alcohol. So this is the mechanism that we have been asked to write these equations. So the second part, we have been to asked to identify the rate determining step. The rate determining step here is the one which is the slowest step. And which of the two steps is the slowest step? This one is the slowest step. So this is the one which determines the rate determining step. So the rate determining step is the first step mechanism. So let's say that this is the first step reaction and this is the second step reaction. So to determine the rate determining step, you consider the slowest reactions. And this is the second one is fast. So that is the answer for the second part. But the third part, you have been asked to explain why the reaction is referred to as the first order nucleophilic substitution reaction. So the reaction is referred as to first order nucleophilic substitution reaction. I'm sure you can answer it because we have explained it when we are talking about the first order nucleophilic substitution reaction. So here it is the first order nucleophilic substitution reaction because the rate determining step or the rate of reaction depends on only one reactant or depends on the concentration of one reactant. And what is that reactant? Is the alkyl, alkyl halide reactant. So that is now over about that reaction. Do you see now it is very simple after having that knowledge. So let us go and see the second example. In the second example, we are now asked, we have a question which states that a compound A contains 66.4 percent carbon, 5.5 of hydrogen, and 28.1 of chlorine. And the vapor density of A was found to be 63. So you are asked to determine the empirical formula of A, the molecular formula of A, and the the write down the isomers of compound A that can exist and their names. Which of the isomers mentioned in B can react with dilute aqueous potassium hydroxide and why the other isomers cannot react with aqueous potassium hydroxide? And you have been given the atomic mass of carbon, which is 12, hydrogen, which is 1, and chlorine, which is 35.5. Now, by just the highlights, the, our compound contain carbon, hydrogen, and chlorine, which means it is a halo alkane because there is carbon, there is hydrogen, and there is chlorine. So to answer the first part, let us construct a table. That the compound contain carbon, contain hydrogen, and contain chlorine. The percentage of carbon is 66.4. And that of hydrogen is 5.5, and that of chlorine is 28.1. Now, we have been given their relative atomic mass. So the atomic mass of carbon is 12. So we have to divide the percentage by the atomic mass of each element. So here we'll divide by 12, and here we'll divide by 1, and here we'll divide by by 35.5. Now, by using your calculator now, you can find the ratio of this data that you have been given. Data into your calculator, 66.4 divided by 12, the answer is 5.53. And here will be 5.5. And there... 28.1 divided by 35.5, the answer is 
0.79. So here now we divide by the smallest ratio, which is now 0 0.79. So here we divide by 0 0.79, here by 0 0.79, here by 0 0.79. Now, after dividing it, divide it using your calculator now, 5.53 divided by 0 point that one. Then you get here 7. So here will be also 7, and this will be 1. So what does it mean here that we have 7 carbon atoms in our haloalkane, 7 hydrogen atom, and 1 chlorine atom. So the empirical formula now, the empirical formula will be equal to C6, C7, and then hydrogen 7, and one chlorine atom. And the, the second part, we have been asked to determine the molecular formula of A, but we have been given the vapor density of our compound. So from that now question two, we know that the empirical formula, empirical formula, times n is equal to 2 vapor density. And the, our empirical formula is C7H7, then 1 chlorine, times n will be equal to 2 times vapor density, which is 63 given in that equation. So here, it will be 7 times e. 7 times the carbon is 12, then plus 7 times 1, then plus chlorine is 35.5, then times 1 also, then in a bracket times any will be equal to this one gives the 126. So if we, we substitute into our calculator 7 times 12, then equals to 84, then plus 7, then plus 35.5. Five, the answer is 126.5 N. So it will be equal to 126. So divide by 126.5, then 126.5. Now the answer, therefore, N will be equal to 1. Therefore, the empirical formula is the same to the molecular formula. Then the molecular formula is C7, then 7 hydrogen atom, and 1 chlorine atom. Since the value of N that we have obtained here is 1. So that is the first part of our question. Now the second part, you have been asked to write the isomers of compound A that can exist in their names. Normally, by looking at the molecular formula, you can know the type of halogens derivatives of our compound A. And here, since we have seven carbon atoms, it means that our halogens derivatives of hydrocarbon contain benzene ring or the aromatic ring. So from there now, to draw their isomers, the isomers now of compound A that can exist in their names, So our isomers must have seven carbon atom, seven hydrogen atom, and one chlorine atom. The first isomer might be this one. Which is known as chlorothal, then benzene. If you count the number of hydrogen is seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Carbon one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Chlorine one. So it match the, the 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 molecular formula that you have obtained. Now the second isomer can be this one. Which is known as two chloro. Methyl benzene.
So this is two chloromethyl benzene. But there are seven carbon atoms, there are seven hydrogen atoms, and one chlorine atom. But also, another isomer can be this one. And this is one, two, three, four. This is four chloro methyl benzene. And also another isomer can be this one. This is three. Chloro methyl benzene. So from from the mentioned isomers, we have been asked which one will react with the potassium hydroxide. If you refer now to our nucleophilic substitution reaction in halogens derivatives of hydrocarbon. This one is the one that can react with the aqueous potassium hydroxide. Why? Due to presence of alkyl halides, alkyl halides in the molecule. So here is where now the hydroxide ions that will be released by potassium hydroxide, which is our nucleophile, will now substitute the halogens here. But in the remaining, in the, in the remaining isomers, the Hydroxyl group is a nucleophile. So if it is a nucleophile, it means that it cannot react with the benzene ring since the benzene ring is also a nucleophile. So nucleophile plus nucleophile, no reaction. So you can now, for your own time, proceed and finish up by writing those examples. Take it as your assignment. But also, another question that you also do your, as, as an assignment is that one. So copy it and do it for the for to measure how much have you understood the lesson now from there now it is my end of this presentation and i'm sure that you have enjoyed it so i welcome you for the next period since we will proceed with the remaining with the remaining chemical properties of halogens derivatives of hydrocarbon thank you very much see you